The recognition that Villain Saga has been receiving brings a tear to my eye. I'm so used to my favorite stories being banished down the depths of irrelevancy. Not villain, but I ask why. This is not an action-packed story with a bunch of slashes and bangs and a shoo 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 shoo. What's going on here? Well, that's what this video is about. Together, we'll go over some of the moments that I believe has impacted all of us. Us, the Villain Saga fans who have read the manga to completion or even our new friends who've come through the anime. Do me a favor and write in the comments on how this story has affected you. I'd love for us to share all of our experiences. One final thing, all of my videos going forward until further notice will have a $10 gift card placed in them. I am so grateful you guys watch my content, so I have to give back. So at a random moment, I'll flash the code. The more we grow, the more I'll be able to give back. Yeah. You have no enemies. With news that war is ahead, all of the young men prepare for battle, including a six-year-old Thorfinn, who goes into his father's chest to find suitable weapons, a couple of daggers. Immediately, a massive hand grabs onto them, attempting to stray Thorfinn off this path of suffering. Who is your enemy? Listen, you have no enemies. This quote has been blazing through social media like wildfire, and for good reason. So what exactly does he mean? Well, first look at a man who has an enemy, Teen Thorfinn, his enemy being Askeladd. After killing his father, Thorfinn vows revenge. With Thorfinn having to earn these opportunities to fight, such as killing generals, fighting Thorkill, or protecting Canute. His life is practically forfeit. Everything he does is in service to the man who claims to be his enemy. By focusing on the hatred, all of the good things that Thorfinn had left, such as his family or his village, became distant memories of the past. So watch this. His sister lost her brother, his mother lost her son, and their village lost their potential leader. All because Thorfinn has an enemy. Thorfinn ain't the only one. Guts lost Casca because of his hatred for apostles. Eren ignored Mikasa for his revenge on Marley, and I can go on and on. Thors is speaking from experience. All of the men he killed and his service to murder brought perspective to his life. I don't think this quote means to avoid all conflict. After all, as men, we need friction to develop. Thors being the best example, through to the adversity in his prior life, he truly understands what matters. Even current Thorfinn's resolve is fueled by the mistakes from his past. Having no enemies comes down to setting aside your differences for understanding and empathy. An example, when half Dan's runaway slave appears at the front of their home, Thors could have paid him no mind. After all, why risk having conflict with this powerful man? Instead, he takes the guy in and cares for him. This look in Thors' eye, I can only hope to be able to replicate one day, because he's not looking at this man in pity or disgust, but understanding his situation is a result of misfortune. When dealing with Halfdan, Thors doesn't argue or attack it, but negotiates for the slave's freedom. An excellent example of doing right by the slave while compensating Halfdan. This is is what it means to have no enemies, understanding both parties while working towards a solution instead of conflict. This is all excellent, but make sure you stick towards the end because I will be talking about my favorite moment in the entire series. Until then, let's take a good look at what happens when you go down this path of revenge against your enemy. Askeladd has given his own life a bigger purpose in serving Canute, allowing him to kill him for the throne. Maybe great news for Canute and Norway, but uh, Thorfinn, not so much. Angered by his kill stolen from him, all he could do is helplessly scream for Askeladd to return to good health. I gotta be honest with you, Chief, I don't think that's happening. In the middle of the commotion, Askeladd says, From now on, after I die, what will you do with your life, Thorfinn? You haven't thought about it at all, have you? This is where Yukimura talks about the idea of trauma. And I'd like to mention Andrew Tate's take on depression, saying that depression doesn't exist, and even if it did, why give it power to dictate your life? Unfortunately, I'm not Jordan Peterson, so I can't speak on the validity of the statement. That being said, I completely understand the idea behind it. A terrible thing happened to him that was outside of his power. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. However, it was his choice to dwell on it and continue to give it life when he did not have to sit by himself shutting everybody out, not working towards a greater future, one that's better than his present. With the death of Askeladd, he's lost all purpose in his life and is now in a worse place from where he started. What I believe Yukimura is trying to convey to us is, this is what happens when you dwell on your misfortune. There's two choices, become like Thor's, move past your past using it as an example to benefit others, or become like Thorfinn who will now spend the next five to six years of his life 
in a constant state of apathy. And you know what they say about apathy. Apathy is death. This point is hammered during Thorfinn's greatest nightmare, and arguably my favorite moment in the entire manga slash anime. Tying this back to our world, Jordan Peterson said something that really influenced my day-to-day -day actions. In his 20 plus years of clinical psychology, he has not met a single person who's gotten away with anything. Every single act of evil that Thorfinn had committed in his day still lives deep within him and comes to life as he sleeps. After a legendary moment of standing up for himself, Thorfinn is knocked out by a cheap shot and enters his normal dreamlike state of a nightmare where he's hanging off a cliff and now we finally get to see what's on the bottom. What is he avoiding to fall into? Every single man who's died in pointless warfare is continuing that very same existence in this afterlife. Sitting above all the action is, of course, Oscalon, who acknowledges his appearance while explaining what's going on. For this is where the garbage dump of warriors go, where everyone is your enemy. A pile of corpses form a tower to grab Thorfinn by his feet, attempting to drag him down, for they should because Thorfinn is the one who is responsible for putting them down there in the first place. The beauty behind this chapter or episode is how it conveys to the viewer what I mentioned earlier. Every bad thing that we do will never leave our subconscious. So what to do? We're not perfect after all and we're definitely gonna make mistakes. Especially a stupid guy like me, you know, mistakes are plentiful. Well according to Askeladd, the solution is to take those very sins that we carry with us to fight the real battle of life. Climb up the mountain with all of our issues attached. When Thorfinn wakes up, he has a heartfelt conversation with Ener. The mental pain of reliving violence was enough to bring back what Thorfinn desperately needed during this moment of his life, resolve. From that day going forward, Thorfinn will never hurt anyone again. He's reborn, starting a new life. This really hits as a guy who's made God knows how many mistakes in his life. I can relate to this so much. Now, the issue with Thorfinn's new resolve is as men, at times, we must act in defense for ourselves or the innocent. Which is why, if you ask me, this was Thor's biggest flaw. Look at it like this. You remember that nice, beautiful Christian village? who got slaughtered? Well, they'd all be alive right now singing about daisies and sunshine if Askeladd was not there. Hild would be working on gadgets if it wasn't for the person that Thorfinn turned into. So this moment in chapter 86 or episode 17 of season two is where I believe Thorfinn surpasses his father as a true warrior. When Snake was about to kill Gardar in front of Arnis, Thorfinn had a choice to make. Either let him kill an injured man in front of his wife who both did not deserve to be in the situation situation they've been placed into, or fight to protect the innocent with the spirit of the man who encouraged Thorfinn to become a true warrior manifesting, the choice is clear. I love the way Yukimura shows us that at times we all have to make exceptions in our life. Sure, violence in itself is evil. That being said, according to Villain Saga, fighting to protect the weak is the path of a true warrior, especially since Snake said this is not a matter that could be negotiated. Unlike the way Thor's did earlier with half Dan, if you've made it this far, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching my content. If you enjoyed, hey, consider doing me a favor and leaving a like. That being said, here's the code. At this point, Thorfinn is well on his way to having the words true warrior stamped on his government ID. However, there's one thing he has to show us. How is he able to handle a tragedy now in his new life? After the outcome with Gardar, our niece is rope bound, awaiting judgment from Kettle for the role she played in the entire situation. Unfortunately for her, Kettle is not all the way there at that moment, and it doesn't help that his wife fabricated her role in the entire situation. So he beats her terribly. It's extremely difficult for any of us to watch. During her last moments, Thorfinn and Ener do everything they can to help her cling on to life. All until she asks, why must I keep living? Living is too painful. After losing her husband and children, I certainly understand her sentiment. Still, living will always be the correct choice between life or death, and Thorfinn needs to find a way to articulate this. So he says, Far, far from here, across the great ocean, there's a land named Vinland, a warm and fertile land, untouched by slave raiders nor the flames of war. There even you can live in peace. So come with us, Arnes. 
and Vinland will build a country of peace. Yo, you don't gotta tell me, I know that that accent slaps. Right after Ener sees Kettle, attempting to introduce him to the same fate as Arnis, until Thorfinn knocks some sense into him, using his own life as an example for why he should avoid revenge at all costs. Standing by her gravestone, they both declare that they'll find a land free of war and slavery. The final evolution for his character comes in the form of his ability to use a tragic situation. For good, in contrast with how he used a tragic situation during the beginning of the story. I swear, this story is just too good. Starting off as a boy who cares for nothing but Osclod's corpse, to now leading an expedition to find a land free of any malevolence. Alright, anime watchers, I am going to cover some manga moments that definitely need recognition. If you want to click off here to wait for these moments to get animated, I certainly understand. Though, if you stay because you're a rebel who does not care, then that works for me. My manga brothers, you know what I must, I must talk about. Think of the panel that I'm alluding to. Think about it, it's about to pop up now, and of course it's this panel. There are manga panels that will be spoken about from now until the end of time, and this is certainly one of them. Now before I go into it, <laughs> here is an extra super secret shh. $10 gift card that is reserved for my manga brothers. Because of course we welcome anime only fans into our community. That being said, for all of my people that are caught up the way I am, you guys are my friends. So at this point of the story, Thorfinn finds out that it was Floki who set Thor's death into action. For an instant moment, oh, even this panel, his old violent tendencies come back. Pure rage manifests around him. So he takes a moment to himself to gather his composure. While sitting, he thinks if he were to see Floki, he would tear him limb for limb. Despite all of the progress he's made at this point of the story, he's a better man than all of us. I want to be a kinder, gentler person. I want to be a stronger person. This is a test sent by coincidence or God. I believe in order to know if you're actually a true warrior, or a good man. Your resolve must be tested. One of Thorfinn's resolve is to never commit any unnecessary violence. And while in an ordinary situation, doing what he wants to do to Floki is very understandable, but for the standard he's held himself to, is not necessary. So for him to recognize he still has that rage within him and want to continue to keep it under control is what truly cements him as a good man. So to answer the question on the thumbnail, Absolutely not. Villain Saga is not just hype. Our generation's values have been severely compromised. From destructive ideas becoming more commonplace, and a lot of men seemingly as a collective becoming mentally weaker, a story such as Villain Saga can save lives, and I am not being overly dramatic. For any young guy who is dealing with a lot of negative issues, Orphan is an excellent example for displaying the capabilities that we have as men to overcome whatever tragedy we fall upon. As long as you remember you don't have any enemies, life will reciprocate those values back. All that being said, thank you for watching my video. I greatly appreciate every single one of you who've clicked, and a little bit extra appreciation for the ones who've made it this far. If you did enjoy, which you know I'm certain you did, make sure to check out my recent video on Vagabond that will build upon or around the stuff that we talked about just now.